Four mistakes people make when hiring a business architect. Gartner and others have infamously said that business architecture, and namely business architects are the key to business transformation success, yet. Business architecture has however been, and still is, mistaken for other roles and disciplines. This mistaken identity is admittedly partly its own fault and partly based on its close naming association with other close and related disciplines. In this video we will clear up the mistaken identity crisis, so you can get most out of the business architect, business architecture and make your digital and business transformation a resounding success, the first time, in record time. Here are the four mistakes people make when hiring a business architect. 1. They think business architecture is enterprise architecture. This is one of the biggest misconceptions, that business architecture is enterprise architecture. Business architecture is actually an element of enterprise architecture, it is not enterprise architecture, per se. Enterprise architecture is made up of two parts, business architecture and technology architecture. To call business architecture, enterprise architecture, is incorrect. In the context of architecture, you architect not part of the organization, but the whole organization. An enterprise architect therefore looks at the whole architecture, across the whole organization. And this is the mistake. What clients unknowingly misunderstand is that when they request an enterprise architect to architect their whole organization, what they actually need is two architects, a technology architect, to look after the technology architecture, and a business architect, to look after the business architecture, who work together to develop and join up their separate architectures, into a complete enterprise architecture, and single target operating model. What the client actually gets though, in most cases is a technology architect, who calls themselves an enterprise architect, but only looks at the technology architecture for the organization. Unbeknown to the client, until some 6 to 12 months later, when the technology architect is struggling to get the business to accept their designs for the future architecture of the organization because although it covers the technology elements extensively, it is missing the crucial part, the people and process, that are improved by and will use the new technology that are in the technology architect's design. 2. They think business architecture is technology architecture. This is the next biggest mistake people make when hiring a business architect. They confuse business architecture with technology architecture. As stated earlier, technology architecture and business architecture are actually two pieces of the same puzzle, that together they form enterprise architecture. To clear up any confusion, technology architecture encompasses the technical elements only of an organization. These aspects and elements are otherwise referred to as technical enablers, or just enablers, as they enable the business to be able to execute its business strategy, and include technology elements such as networks, servers, storage, communications, platforms etc. The issue with business architecture being confused or mistaken as technology architecture, is often that technology architecture is looking at the business through a technology lens, and business concepts, issues or concerns, not through a business lens. The cause of this misrepresentation comes from two areas, historical emphasis on the technology side of enterprise architecture, from the development of the Zachman framework in 1987, and later with TOGAF and others as setting the foundations of any architectures that we designed to support an IT strategy. Then the next cause of this confusion is that enterprise architects themselves usually come from a technology background, as either an application, solution, information or data architect, it project lead or developer. So, when they perform business architecture activities, they do so using a technical lens, seeing and believing all business concerns, problems and issues can be addressed and solved by a technology solution, and in a lot of cases, a technology solution alone, which in practice is not always the case, and doesn't always work, hence the high failure rate in transformation programs. 3. They think business architecture is business analysis. The next biggest misconception about business architecture is that business architecture is business analysis, which also includes the misconception that a business architect is a business analyst both in terms of the role they perform on the program, and the activities they do. 
although both activities and roles are related, even sharing similar tools and techniques, both are necessary in developing the design and implementing the target operating model. Tom, they differ in the following ways. They have a different focus. Business architecture's focus is on the planning, strategy, and long-term time horizons. It also takes place earlier on in the program life cycle, helping set and define the direction of the organization and program. They help the business determine the business strategy and answer the big strategic questions like, is there a hole in that market, and a market in that hole? Business analysis and business analysts focus on the other more tactical, short-term time horizons. In terms of the program life cycle, business analysts are usually involved later in the business and project life cycle than business architects, once the market in the whole has been determined. Business analysis and business analysts help the business develop and implement the solution, now that the business architecture has given the green light, i.e., there is a hole in the market and this is how we can compete. They operate at a different organization level. Business architects operate at the organization or strategic level, whereas business analysis generally work at the lower operational implementation levels. Business architecture and business architects main focus is looking at the what is possible and why for the organization at a strategic or enterprise wide level, whereas business analysis and the business analyst work at the project level and translates with the business the high level strategic requirements to define how lower level implementation requirements. They are engaged at different times or phase within the program. The next area of difference between the business architect and the business analyst is timing. The business architect is brought into and onto the organization or program early in the business or program life cycle to lead the design. By contrast, the business analyst is generally brought into the organization or program later in the business or program cycle as part of the implementation of the design. The business architect intentionally comes in early in the program compared to the business analyst to lead the development of the design and implementation of the TOM. What this means in practice is that the business architect does the majority of their work upfront in the planning stages of the program. The business analyst on the other hand joins the program later in the program life cycle. This is after the business architect has agreed with the business the vision and business strategy that the analysis of the current operating model and planning the design of the target operating model Tom, can begin. When the business analyst joins the program, they carry out the detailed analysis of the current state of the organization. They also translate those high-level business and strategic requirements into lower-level, detailed implementation requirements, working with the business architect ensuring that the implementation requirements are aligned to the architecture and the design of the TOM. They share similar tools, but use them differently. The fourth area of difference between the business architect and the business analyst is in their different use of similar tools. The business architect and business analyst share some common tools and techniques but use these tools differently. Just like a weightlifter and a bodybuilder use weights in their respective disciplines, the outcome of using these same tools is very different, one is focused on strength, the other on aesthetics. These differences are mainly due to the differences in focus, as in how they use the tools, and who they use them on. One example is impact and gap analyses. The business architect will carry out a gap analysis on existing business capabilities to assess their ability to meet future strategic objectives whereas the business analyst will use gap analysis to assess the differences and changes required between existing current processes and the proposed future processes as part of the proposed future operating model. Just because a business architect uses the same tool or technique as a business analyst doesn't make the business architect a business analyst and vice versa, but hiring a business architect to do implementation requirements is not the right resource for the job, as is hiring a business analyst to design the target business architecture. The scale of change they deal in is different. The fifth area of differentiation between the business architect and business analyst is scale. Business architecture and business architects deal with big scale. This is not to say, more important or more significant, this is saying they focus on larger sized tasks. To use the analogy of renovating a house, if you are a homeowner renovating the bathroom, you have two options, you can do it yourself or bring in an expert. 
as it's only a single room i.e. relatively speaking it is not physically that big compared to the overall size of the house, it doesn't impact too many other rooms by changes made inside it i.e. low interactions and dependencies on other rooms, particularly the structure of the house. As a result, you assess it's a relatively small job. You determine, based on it is a relatively small job, you could manage it yourself but you still need specialists to complete specific parts of it, like a plumber, for the plumbing, an electrician, for the wiring, and lastly a carpenter, for the woodwork. If on the other hand, you're renovating the whole house, from front to back, top to bottom then all the rooms would be impacted, not just the bathroom, of the small job example above. As a result, you would likely think you only had one option, unless you're a master builder, and that would be to bring in an expert. You would need someone that can see across the whole house and understand the impacts and dependencies of changes in one part of the house, and the knock-on effects to other parts of the house. You're also thinking of removing a few walls to open up the living space which adds a new level of complexity and risk, and these risks need to be managed. You need someone to come up with the design and manage the implementation of that design, factoring in the dependencies and impacts of changes in one part of the house with timing of changes in the other. That specialist is the architect, and in the case of an organization or business, that specialist is the business architect. 4. They think business architecture is business change The fourth mistake people make when hiring a business architect is, they think business architecture is business change. To be clear, the business architect is not a business change person, who compiles the detailed people change impact analyses, plans and leads the implementation of the final solution with the project manager. Business architecture and business change do however cross over. The point where business architecture and business change cross over, is in the delivery phase, where the business architect works with business change to oversee that the physical implementation aligns with the design. The role of the business architect here is to highlight the business changes, the changes to the organization's business capabilities i.e. people, process and technology, to the business change manager, which are candidates for change as part of the design of the TOM. The actual detail of the business change activities, what that change means to the business on a day-to-day -day operational level, and how the business will transition from existing processes, old systems, roles and responsibilities to new processes, new systems, roles and responsibilities is not the role of the business architect. What often happens in practice, however, is the business architect is drawn into business change conversations, as they should be, to confirm and assure the business change activities will lead to the implementation of the TOM design. But this is where the confusion sets in, the business architect is inadvertently tasked with coming up with the above-mentioned business change plan and activities due to the familiarity with the subject matter, having also come up with the design. Business change, however, is a specialist skill set, with its own frameworks, tools and techniques, as is business architecture. We would highly recommend if you find yourself in this situation, to push back, subtly of course, and redirect the questioning to business change. To avoid these mistakes, it is essential that you clarify with the client as part of the pre-engagement conversations clear expectations on the differences between business architecture and mostly technology architecture and how these two architects and architectures work together, or if your program is underway, clarify roles and responsibilities as part of the governance framework. To get more transformation solution videos like this, hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment below to let us know what you'd like to see next.